next presentation, we have Liang Yan, a senior software engineer from DigitalOcean. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to give you a topic about how to optimize your rescheduler and the autoscaler uh, on the Kubernetes cloud, but from a heterogeneous uh, task perspective. So before that, a little bit about myself. I'm, I'm the software engineer from DigitalOcean. Uh, infrastructure fleet work team. I'm, I'm a software engineering, but I'm super interested in the hardware. So I'm work, focused on the hardware virtualization for GPU network. I'm, I'm also quite interested in the heterogeneous architecture acceleration and optimization for distributed machine learning. So today we are going to look about uh, the re-optimization. Like, uh, so first we will see uh, where the story begins, what is the problem we are facing, and then have a quick look about the re Kubernetes and uh, see some of our work currently doing and uh, planning doing in the future. So first, yeah, where the story begins. Uh, you probably already have noticed that when looking at uh, HPC cluster today, we kind of, uh, all the system kind of assume that uh, the hardware in the cluster are identical or at least uh, even don't care about it. All the controller just uh, distribute all the workload to the uh, worker, and then just uh, wait thinking back uh, from the later I think, organization. However, it's kind of a different, uh, uh, for our uh, like uh, exploration, kind of shows a different story from this one. For example, like the operator performance. The operator here is like the uh, PyTorch operator, not the Kubernetes operator here. So. We, we noticed that uh, the performance of it is not kind of related to the data, in, input data, but actually because of the GPU type. And also we also noticed that, that even we choose a better hardware there, we may not uh, get a better result as expected. So this gives us a think that maybe we should take a look at a different uh, heterogeneous uh, GPU situation. So we start from the flex flow, uh, uh, the first uh, uh, distributed machine learning that could provide an automatic uh, parallel strategy is from CMU. It's task-based uh, and a logical resource map, stick uh, uh, task graph. Uh, another reason we choose it is because it's based on Legend and the Realm, uh, MIT uh, HPC system, which could support a simulator. So it gives us the flexibility to uh, do verify things. And also we tried the uh, machine learning operator in Kubeflow, but uh, there are just too many uh, restraints there. We'll see later, so. Uh, but uh, during this work, one day one of my best friend introduced me Ray. So I had a look at that. I was so fascinated by it. So for a quick introduction, Ray is a kind of popular, the, uh, distributed machine learning today, which is back behind the uh, chat GPT of OpenAI. And uh, me, myself, are so interested in three kind of uh, main features of it. The first one is the reactor model. It uh, has uh, two different uh, uh, jobs there. Task is a kind of a function, stateless. You can put it everywhere uh, when the work uh, ready. The other is actor. It's a class which has the uh, a stateful, which kind of have, you need, a, you can't just assign it anywhere. You need to put a, uh, someone already has an actor there. It also uh, has this remote function. You can set up the resource you're going to use. It also has the weight to uh, coordinate your uh, dependency uh, during the setup. Uh, the other one is the resource. It, similar with the flex flow, we, I just talked about that. It also has this uh, map idea conception here. So it has the logical resource, and uh, when we set up like the remote uh, function earlier, it's actually not the pure physical resource. And even we set up the resource uh, qu quarter there, it's actually not like we set a two CPU, five GPU, it may not really use the, this exact one. So this gives us the flexibility to uh, try different uh, machine, uh, machine type, device type later. So. The last and also most important one is the dynamic task graph. Uh, th also similar with the flex flow, it's, it's a static uh, 
uh, task graphic. So that one is easier. For this one, it's much more complicated. Of course, it also has the flexibility for setting up. So it needs like low, la low latency scheduling. It also needs like when scheduling things there. You need to different work node there. You need to make sure all the data is also there. So they kind of have this in-memory uh, data center uh, database there it's called the epic error there. I think that's for this purpose here. Uh, so yes. Ray could also run on the Kubernetes, Ray, similar with all the other training operator in the Kubernetes flow on the Kubernetes. Here is kind of interesting. It's also like using this Kubernetes operator. Every time you launch a job, it actually launch a cluster there. And uh, uh, it has all the uh, resources there. You can set up CPU, GPU. And uh, this is give us the idea to try different uh, resource setup. It also has an auto scaler, but similar with other uh, uh, Kubernetes scaler, scheduler or even the Kubernetes scheduler there is quite straightforward and uh, quite limited on the function. We can like we could, uh, yes, not so much we want to do, but we definitely want to improve for our dev environment. Uh, we are la lack of the hardware, so we're only using one server with eight uh, GPUs, eight thirty GPUs there, and we set all the Kubernetes environment on the VMs. We have these three uh, Kubernetes. We set up uh, uh, GPU and uh, CPU compute there. You can see we actually uh, use a different flavor uh, for th that's that's set up on purpose. So what we are doing is that we are so far only focused on the deep learning. And, but we are also we are implemented a ResNet, but we are also thinking to implement a transformer model later. And uh, we actually added this ta task level. The idea behind that is we're trying to ramp a series of uh, uh, tasks uh, going to the worker there. And uh, it's actually pretty good. Uh, I think that the idea, the, there's a PyTorch operator there it's called the operator fusion. It's kind of a similar idea. And based on that, we, we found that sometimes instead of giving it more similar uh, nodes, it's better to give it some bigger node, like uh, from the vertical um, prod autoscaler. Like we set one, two, four GPUs there. So I think that's also kind of verified that because the dynamic graphic, uh, uh, task graphic there, they need to think the debt for different uh, tasks. But if we put it in one node, it actually has better performance. We also try to put the device topology into consideration. Uh, so far, we only add the PCIe locality and the different uh, GPU types. Uh, in the future, we may put more information into con uh, consideration. We need the new hardware there for, for sure. Like, uh, we, we can also uh, put, add the NVLink RDMA for the epic arrow there. So like even so far, the in-memory database is already very fast, but still not quite enough in some specific uh, situation. So we may thinking maybe we can put NVLink or even RDMA into consideration. So yes, <laughs> this is the first time to do the lighting. Thank you so much. And uh, like I said, uh, this is just a new project to transfer from Backflow to Kubernetes. Uh, feel free to reach me if you are interested uh, with ideas, questions, or collaboration. Thank you very much. <laughs>